A lot of very powerful people in the world would love to see your program fail. In any case, I'm afraid you've lost Mrs. Ashley. We're not giving up on Mary Ashley yet. No, we'll think of something. You bring me a hell. Bring him here tomorrow. And I'll... I'll give him a name. Okay? No, okay. You want to know the name. All right. Well, you think you can remember that name? I love it when you whisper in my ear. You do? Mm hmm Do you like me? Sure, I like you. You want to go to bed now? Yeah. And I make you breakfast. Great. I make omelet fantastico. And I'll teach me how. Yeah? Mm hmm Tell me more about Angel. Like, uh, like, when do I get to meet him? Well, I called him this morning. He'll be over soon. Yeah? See? Si. Hey, that's great. Come on, get in the bath. Let's make uh, you feel good. Right. <laughs> I got a present for you. What? I I can't hear you with that thing blowing. I got a present for you from Angel. Oh, that's nice. What? This. You don't like the man you sent. Too nosy. Shh, run. Yeah, sure. He tell me you do it. All right, hold on now, man. I gotta write it down. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And how don't need no advance. Nobody cheats on her. Sure. My job is finished. Send money, State Bank, Zurich. Account number J three four nine six seven seven. You got that? Bueno. Oh, just heard on the radio, Mrs. Ashley. I guess now you, Alf Landon, and Eisenhower are Kansas' only political big shots. I'm a teacher, Mr. Hacker, not a politician. And right now, I was just wondering if you could get these spots out of best jeans. Uh, well, I'll see what I can do for her. I guess she's a real grown-up teenager now. Beth was born a teenager, Mr. Hack. <laughs> How's Tim? A lot like Beth. OK, what is it? Oh, I don't know. I guess I'm feeling a little guilty. Why? Because you didn't take the appointment? Well, I feel sort of responsible. Look, what if I'd been offered an opportunity like that? I've jumped at it. Talk about your male chauvinist. Take her somewhere. You guys never go anywhere. Go to London. Go to Paris for a couple of weeks or something. You know, Doug, you might just have something there. Hell, I might even take her to Romania.
That's your homework in front of me? It's a goodbye letter to Arnold. Goodbye? I thought you liked him. He wanted to fool around. Oh. I hate that. I really hate that. I mean, I don't mind being in love, but I'm never gonna have sex. Well, sweetheart, you're only 14 years old. Things do change. Never. I'm never gonna feel differently about that. You sure? Absolutely. Okay, that's your decision. Mom? Yes, honey? What did the president say when you turned him down? Oh, well, I don't know his exact words, but I, I hear he was very brave about it. Give my best to Arnold. Professor Ashley, lights out. You can always tell when you've had a rough day. I treated a 13-year-old girl with genital herpes. Dear. Thanks to worry about Beth. You don't have to. She's planning to die a virgin. today about turning down the um, I love you, Mary Ashley. And I'm about to make you an offer you can't refuse. I accept. I accept. <laughs> Bloody limousines. This place is closed on Monday. Never mind. The dissident Marin Groza has been terminated by the assassin known as Angel. Has Mary Ashley accepted the appointment? <clears throat> the Ashley woman has declined the post as ambassador to Romania. Although I am led to believe that the situation can be rectified. Is she really that essential to us? The controller can think of no one else who would suit our purpose so well. Hanson, this is Hyde White, MI5. I'd like you to tell him what you told me. Well, sir, the castle were closed, see? And I hear all these limousines. I counted seven of them. They come and went. Zip, 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 zip. God only knows what was going on. Sir, and what were you doing there? Oh, well, sir, my girl Annie and I, we were under a tree and we were having a picnic and the... Uh, well, Hanson, you know how one... did you get the license number? Oh, yes, sir, I got two of them. All right, Constable, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. As it happens, Inspector, the occasion was nothing more sinister than a royal function being planned without the press being aware of it. A good man, that, however. I'm going to see if he can be transferred to a better position. Uh, thank you for everything. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, he's here. Wait, just a minute. It's a friend of Pete Grimes. He says Pete's having a heart attack. He oh, says he's in a lot of pain. Ten to one, it's his damn ulcer acting up again. <clears throat> Dr. Ashley, 
Uh-huh. Yeah, okay, I'm on my way. My car's blocking yours. Yeah, I'll take that. I'm sorry, I don't... What? what? Miss Ashley, please no. don't go in. Let go I of wouldn't me. do Let that. Go. Please. stop sign you see this army truck was coming by and well it looks like he, he tried to to avoid him but your husband just pulled right out in front no no my husband was a careful driver he you never Sorry, ma'am, but we have witnesses, uh, a Colonel Jenkins who happened to be passing by, and, well, of course, the Army truck driver, Sergeant Lee from Fort Riley, and, well, they both say the same thing, that, that your husband ran the stop sign. I guess I'll have you taken back home now, ma'am. <clears throat> What's the name of your family doctor? Edward Ashley. Edward Ashley is my family doctor. How you doing? Hmm? I'd never been sailing. What? When we met, he hmm? said, do you like to sail? So we went to the lake that morning. A week later, we were married. You know why I married you, lady? 
You laughed a lot. You passed the test and you didn't fall overboard. Beats me. Beats the hell out of me, Jake. Now, what's that, John? There's 1048 on the Ashley accident. The guy had no accident record. He, the only ticket he ever got was for illegal parking. So? Well, the tire marks. They, they bother me, Jake. They, they just don't add up. Well, I thought there were witnesses. Yeah, well, we had the guy that was driving the truck, but he could have been covering for himself. What about the other one, uh, the colonel? Yeah, the more I thought about him, the more I wondered what the hell he was doing out there at 3.30 in the morning. So I called the Army CID investigator to talk to that colonel. They transferred him overseas as some big promotion. Well, what about the truck driver? Well, they found him in the barracks yesterday afternoon. Fatal heart attack, they said. The guy was only 29 years old. John, what are you thinking? Make any difference what I'm thinking, Jake. This case is closed. So, rolls to his left, fires the football. It's complete at the 50 yard line. Eric Mack is to the 45, to the 43. First and 10, Kansas State. The tackle was by Billy Wilson, the cornerback. But Eric Mack takes the catch right over the middle. Oh, I rang. I guess you didn't hear me. And then getting the first down. Uh, John Cadillac likes that figure. That's great. First down. I, I made you a meatloaf. Are you and the kids? Team. I thought you might enjoy it. To the right side, Thank slid you. in left. Wild and Witherspoon now in the game. Here's Dickey on the reverse to Witherspoon. He'll come to the left side. He's you know, that way you don't have to cook tonight or anything. First and goal, Kansas State. I'll just leave it in the kitchen. Great call. Great call on. We'll send a split end wide to the left side and Kevin Pierce. To the right is Ruben Echoes. He'll be picked up by Jim. She hardly knew I was there. She was concentrating on that game so much. It was spooky. Well, Mary hates football. I know that. Don't you think I know that? But it was Edward who watched all the games. Doug, I know that. I'm sorry. Yes? Mrs. Ashley, I'm Stanton Rogers. Uh, yes, I, I know. May I speak with you a moment, please? Please, come in. Forgive me for intruding upon your privacy, but the president asked me to visit you personally. Oh, it's very kind of him to send the flowers. We were deeply distressed when he heard what had happened. I'll tell you quite frankly, Mrs. Ashley, the president is hoping that you might reconsider his offer. Oh, Mr. Rogers, I... Hear me out, please. You see, initially, I was against your appointment. That is a very sensitive post, I told the president as much. But the more I learned about you, the more I think his initial instinct was absolutely right. But I'm not a politician. Some of our finest ambassadors were never politicians. In fact, one of them, Galbraith, was a professor like yourself, as you surely know. I'm well aware of that. Many of them were political amateurs, but they all had intelligence, a love of their country, and a reservoir of goodwill toward the country in which they were to serve. You have just the kind of image the president wants to project in Iron Curtain countries. Mr. Rogers, I still have my children to think about. There is a remarkably... F